In this video, I'm going to be explaining the concept of resonance, and my explanation is going to be geared towards a general chemistry student. So if you're in organic chemistry, you're probably going to find that this explanation is not sufficient for your class. Before we get into talking about resonance, we're going to start by drawing the Lewis structure for the nitrate ion. The Lewis structure for the nitrate ion has a total of 24 valence electrons. There are five valence electrons in the nitrogen, and there are six valence electrons in each one of the oxygen, plus one extra electron for the negative charge. To start the Lewis structure, we're going to connect each one of the oxygen atoms to the nitrogen atom with a single bond. Those three single bonds use a total of six electrons, which leaves us with 18. And then we're going to use those 18 electrons to give our oxygen atoms each an octet. That used 18 electrons, which leaves us uh, with no more available electrons to work with. Now, in this situation, we can see that our nitrogen atom in the center only has six electrons around it, which means that it needs two more. And we know what to do in this situation. We need to take one of the lone pairs of electrons from an oxygen, and we need to convert that lone pair into a double bond. And this is where we're actually going to start talking about resonance. So in this particular situation, we have to make a choice about which lone pair we are going to convert into a double bond. In a molecule like nitrate, we could choose to take a lone pair from the oxygen that I've drawn in the top of the molecule and use that lone pair to make a double bond. Or we could choose to take one of the lone pairs from this oxygen atom that's in the lower right hand side and we could use one of its electrons to make a double bond. Or we could choose to do um, the same with our oxygen in the lower left-hand corner. When we have this choice, should I take the electron from here or here or here, when we have this type of choice, we say that the molecule has resonance. As a general chemistry student, you just simply want to think about resonance as when you have more than one choice, more than one option for converting a lone pair to a double bond or a triple bond if that's the case. Now again, I want to say again that um, if you are an organic chemistry student, this is not a sufficient explanation for you. So this is only an explanation that would be appropriate for a general chemistry student because this is a very simplified explanation. So when you're drawing a Lewis structure and you need to convert a lone pair to a double bond and you find that you have several lone pairs that you can convert to a double bond, and by that I don't mean that we could have taken this lone pair or this lone pair, or this lone pair, but I mean several different atoms that you could use to make the double bond or triple bond, then you have what we call resonance. When you have this situation, you are required to draw every single available option. So we have to show all three of the situations, which means that we have to draw three Lewis structures for this molecule, and we separate those Lewis structures from each other with this double-headed arrow. This double-headed arrow, which we we call the resonance arrow is used to indicate this type of relationship between these three molecules. So the resonance arrow tells us that this structure and this structure, because they're connected by the resonance arrow, they're just representing two choices of where we would place the double bond. Or in this case, we have three structures separated by the resonance arrow, representing three locations where we could place that double bond. We put all of the resonance structures together in square brackets, whether or not the molecule is charged. If the molecule is charged, we put the negative charge on the outside of all the brackets. Now there are some situations, some softwares that actually will bracket each individual resonance structure. So the brackets will go like this with the arrows in between. So you might see that type of notation, but that's definitely not 
notation that most chemists use. So you, um, before I finish this video, I want to say that you might be looking at this, uh, these three structures here and saying, what actually is the difference between these three? Because if I take this structure here and I just rotate it a little bit clockwise, I end up moving this double bond down to this position. So because of that, in fact, aren't these two structures actually identical to each other? And same thing here, if I take this structure and just rotate it a little bit, um, to the left, then I move the double bond into this position, so aren't these two structures identical to each other as well? A lot of students see that. They see the ability to rotate this structure to get it to look like this. And that is partially accurate and partially inaccurate. It is true that if you take this structure and rotate it, it will visually be identical to this structure here and if you rotate this structure it will be visually identical to this structure as well so in terms of us just looking at these three structures if we rotate them around they will all look exactly the same and it would be uh, impossible for us to see any difference between these three structures but that does not change the fact that there are three unique oxygen atoms in this molecule there are three separate oxygen atoms which I can color with different colors. Uh, we could distinguish these three oxygen atoms from each other by uh, making them different isotopes of the oxygen. One of them could be uh, oxygen 16, one of them could be oxygen 15. So we could distinguish them from each other. Actually, it would make more sense for this to be 16 and this to be 15, and maybe we make this one oxygen 17, I don't know. So we, we could make them three entirely distinct oxygen atoms, and that when we are able to do that type of labeling on our molecule, we are able to see that there are three unique places where this double bond can go. So these three structures, even though they are visually identical, they do represent three different versions of this molecule, and each one deserves to be drawn individually and um, given its own space on your paper. In the next video, I'm going to practice more drawing of resonance structures with some molecules that are slightly more complicated. So if you want more practice, just move on to the next video.